what would you say were your chances of being involved in an injury road accident? One in a million? One in ten thousand? One in a hundred? One in two? Spend a few seconds contemplating this. What if I told you the answer is one in two? Surprised? That means that every single one of you watching this video either knows someone who has been involved in a serious accident or you have been involved in a serious accident yourself. Most accidents are the result of a mistake on the part of the driver and the most common mistake is not seeing what others are doing. The way to avoid accidents is to learn how to see and react to stay out of trouble. But learning to see is not that easy. We can't possibly take into account everything on today's busy roads. We may miss seeing something or indeed misinterpret something that we have seen. We need to learn how to select what it is important to see. That's why the Five Habits system has been designed to help you identify risks and respond to them. The system of car control is based on space and visibility. Space gives a cushion of safety to avoid danger. Here, the driver is boxed in and vulnerable, with nowhere to go. Whereas here, with space all around, there is an escape option. Visibility is about seeing and being seen. Giving yourself enough time to spot the dangers and letting others see what you're doing. More space gives more visibility. So, how do you get this space and visibility? Well, you can learn to develop the five habits. Used together, you get all the space and visibility that you need. Look well ahead. Move your eyes. Spot the problems. Keep space. Be seen. So, let's now take a look at each one in turn. It's fairly obvious that you need to look ahead when driving. If you look just at the end of the bonnet, it's almost impossible to steer in a straight line. And if you're not looking where you're going, you're in danger of either hitting something or running off the road. Think of your eyes as the headlights of a car. When they're dipped, they see this far. On full beam, they see much further. Looking down like this and travelling at 30 miles per hour, you would have less than a second's warning of a problem ahead. No time to do anything except panic. So, we need to look as far ahead as possible. Well, what are we looking for? We're looking for anything that might change our speed or position. There's a pelican crossing ahead. If you spot the lights changing early, then you can slow down and give way easily. There's a car signalling right. What does that tell us? They will probably turn off just around the bend and maybe have to stop. You can slow down and move to the left to get through when there's enough space. Looking well ahead allows you to plan well ahead. The more time you have, the more options you have. You might see a sign in the distance before you can read it, but the shape and colour will give a clue as to its meaning, particularly a red triangle. These signs are there to inform and give warning of danger. Unless you're looking well ahead, you have no means to decide what is a safe or sensible speed at which to drive. If you want to make safe and swift progress, you need to know when to speed up and when to slow down. If you are too late slowing down, you may enter a corner too fast. If you are too late speeding up, you may miss an overtaking opportunity. Looking well ahead allows you time to anticipate a change of course or speed. Look at this situation here and imagine that you are the driver of this car and not looking well ahead. What pieces of information are you missing by not looking well down the road? Thank you.
Things change so quickly when you're driving that it isn't enough just to look well ahead. You need to keep moving your eyes so you can build up a picture of what's happening all around. And the picture changes every couple of seconds or so. So we need to keep looking for clues. Clues that will help determine the course of action that we may need to take. So, feet under a parked vehicle warn us that someone is about to cross the road and we can slow down in plenty of time. We also need to know what's happening behind. Keeping a clear picture of the road behind lets us know when it's safe to make a move. And because all the mirrors have different views, we need to check them all. The mirrors don't show the whole picture, however, and at times you need to turn your head to check the blind spots. Look what happens when this driver moves away without checking the blind spot. That was a near miss. And this time, the blind spot is checked and the driver decides to wait until it is safe to move away. Moving your eyes will help you to stay alert. If you fix your eyes on something for more than a few seconds, you'll find that they develop a blank stare and the edges of your vision becomes blurred. If you find it hard to move your eyes when driving, consider stopping and taking a break. Take a look at this situation here. Imagine you are the driver and decide what important piece of information you would miss if you did not move your eyes. So, we're driving along. We're looking well ahead and we're moving our eyes. We're building up the picture of what's going on all around us. At the same time, we also need to spot the problems, problems that may affect us. It might affect our space or our visibility. On a busy road like this, with cars turning, pedestrians and parked cars, anybody could cause a problem. If you can spot the problems early enough, then you can be prepared to slow down and stop. Signs warn you of potential problems. A hill or bend might hide something, so cover the brake and give yourself time to avoid a parked car around the bend or a broken down vehicle over the brow of a hill. Adjust your speed to suit the conditions. In rain, stopping distances are doubled. In ice or snow, they can be ten times greater than normal, so give yourself much longer to brake. In darkness, you can only see as far as the range of your headlights. And a bright sun can also reduce your visibility, so slow down. If you only had one problem to deal with, then you might be fine. It's the fact that you have several to deal with at the same time that makes it so much more complicated and so much more difficult to decide how to act. Look at this situation and decide, as the driver, how many problems you would need to deal with. The picture has been divided into four zones. Take each zone at a time. We've looked well ahead and moved our eyes. We've built up a picture and spotted the problems. Now we need to decide how to act, which is all about space and visibility. If we leave enough space, then we will leave ourselves enough time to react. But trying to leave space on today's roads is no easy matter. What we need to do is find a balance between keeping pace with the traffic and keeping space from the traffic. So how much space should you leave? One of the most common causes of crashes is following too closely. We need to leave enough space in front so that we can stop if the car in front stops suddenly. We can use the two second rule to judge this. As the vehicle in front of you passes a stationary object, try saying, only a fool breaks the two second rule, because that takes two seconds to say. Or counting, a thousand and one, a thousand and two.